Hello everyone, my name is Amos Nimas and welcome to this new video. I say this every video, but this is gonna be an interesting video about a program I made. Let me explain what is this program that you currently see on your screen. It's a C++ program that will take um, an image, like this image for example, and um, I mean for this example I just like compressed the image a little bit so that it is a little bit smaller and uh, I posterized it but it's not necessary it's just something I did because I did <laughs> and uh, what it will do um, it will convert this image into a text file so which of these like if, if I were to list the text file I I'm not even sure if I still have it I think it's phase two there. Wait a minute, I have it. It's right here. So yeah, like phase and phase two. I don't know which one is the the right one. Um, of course, you cannot zoom out because, uh, as a reminder, these are text file, and most text editor do not allow you to zoom in or out. Um, which I admit might be a cool feature for a text editor. Um, so if you're making a text editor, think about that. It might be an interesting tool but if I go into my preference and change the font size I might be able to see this image a little bit better let's say 10 for example there you go so yeah uh, that's the image um, you don't really see which color I mean you don't really get to understand the image without the color um, but each character basically represent a color so uh, yeah, I cannot zoom in like I was uh, earlier, but you get it. So I got, I got this text file, um, which is, it can be useful, you know. But now the, the, the big question is, how can I convert this text file back into an image? Um, so I, I did like this small test right here, um, which I wrote manually uh, some character and then I converted those characters into an image. So if I just like, for example, uh, let's bring the font back up a little bit. So you can see I use Z, which is equivalent to white, and I use A, which is the equivalent for black. Um, and once you understand like the basics of this, um, you can like, I made this small image uh, only by writing the text and then converting it back into an image. So that's what this, um, I mean, multiple version of this software. Um, so if I go into the old code, if I go into final, um, that's interesting. That's a chapter of my book that I converted to uh, an image. Uh, you got two version of this uh, same chapter um, with different parameter. So that's interesting. Um, I think, yeah. Uh, so that's a chapter of my book. There's this image right here which uh, that's the original I took from the internet and then that's the uh, version that I compressed to text and then converted back into an image so as you can see the conversion is not perfect but uh, if I show you the color palette uh, that I use for this um, here it is so each color is associated to a character of your like it can be a letter um, like you have the uh, the first right here are the non-capitalized lowercase letter and here you have the capitalized letter and uh, this part right here I, I'm probably gonna remove it uh, these are the symbols like um, yeah the symbols uh, and you, I, I could also add like the numbers and symbols but uh, so basically I can have like three color palette um, one for the lowercase one for the uppercase and one for the uh, symbols and numbers and uh, yeah, the way I rendered this color palette was by simply like typing it, uh, typing all the options <laughs> right here into a text file and copying the, the line multiple times. And when I use my program to convert this text into an image, I got the color palette of this software. Um, it's in C++ the way it works, and uh, I also started making an engine, a small game engine, and uh, I, I will probably not use this specific method for storing sprites but one thing I want to do ideally is to have everything into a single program into a single file uh, which would be one 
um, compiled file. Um, so I will need to find a way to compress image and to have them into like a binary format or, of some sort of or an array of pixel uh, that will be in already inside of the game code. So when I will compile the game, the image will be inside of the game code and not uh, a separate file outside of the game code. Um, so you won't need like a wizard installer that will install the game and have all the file installed somewhere on the computer because it's all going to be within the main game code and the engine also. So I'm, not, I'm trying to make like a very very lightweight game engine and so far so good. So far you know uh, I made it so that you can display a sprite, you can have like an image in the background and set a background color and you can change like the position of the sprite. So it's it's very basic and I'm gonna add lots of feature but I, I take it slowly. As you can see even in this video I try to talk a little bit slower because um, I tend to you know try to do things too fast. I try to complete my project too quickly and it's it was good and uh, back in the day I could finish a complete game into a day. A single day I could finish a complete game project with pretty much all the aspect that you would expect from a game but as any other good programmer would tell you um, these projects aren't viable for larger scale they're not scalable they, they have spaghetti code as we call it and uh, yeah so this is I, I'm not gonna make this video very, very long I already showed like this is uh, this is a variation color palette uh, that I tried um, so this idea come, came to me uh, inspired by the Pico 8 game engine um, virtual console also that it's called and uh, those are other attempts at converting this image uh, this is again the original image I have two versions of the same image and uh, yeah these are all like if I were to uh, go in here and list all the that CPP um, just grip the CPP file um, you see like I have multiple version uh, within this my game engine would be I think this one but I'm not sure because I don't use proper naming convention like I should if I try to launch main I think that's my game engine yeah as you can see display like you have an image uh, the sprite for some reason is rendered behind the background but I fixed that and the code is just not compiled yet so if, if I try to compile it uh, cat compile uh, cat uh, final compile so if I tried for example to compile this into a new version uh, no such file or directory um, hmm. yeah <laughs> I'll waste some time on trying to compile my um, the last version of my game engine uh, later on but yeah I'm using um, if you were wondering I'm using SDL2 um, which is you know the simple direct layer library that a lot media media library that allows you to you know display image take input from the system all the basic stuff that you know at this point should be already pre-included in C++. I mean people, people, some people would argue that C++ would be bloated if you added like this feature into the, the game and not the game engine but the language itself but I don't think so because there's a lot of feature to C++ that are you know bloated and that nobody uses and they take space into the language and the language is very complex and there's a lot of um, feature that has been added through through the time that it's been developed um, and none of them address the main function that people need from a program which is they can put display shit uh, <laughs> you know it's interacting with the the hardware that's the main thing that you need program to do nowadays and yeah I think that uh, having the SDL library pre-included like Python has a lot of default, good default module already within Python. 
um, and they call that like a virtual programming environment and I mean it's not the same you can't compare C++ with Python and I get it how it works is different but um, you can't tell me that there wouldn't be a way to include like the SDL uh, library within C++ um, that's my opinion and that's the end of this video because I have nothing else to say I just uh, I won't even show you the program in action so you just you will just have to believe me that it works based on like the text file I show you and all this because uh, I'm too lazy to download a new image and uh, show you how the program work basically to run the program like I can run it but on the same image but it's just gonna produce the same result and I don't want to download uh, or move another image into this folder like if I uh, why not um, if I go into like file open a new tab and I go into image no 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 like that jpeg eh, jpeg uh, beep. okay I got like magic card what, what is this image okay that's good I'm gonna copy this image paste it here magic card that jpeg okay and I'm gonna use ct3 um, to convert it to a text file basically so magic card to magic.txt there you go and we have magic.txt which contains um, the text for this image so you can move around the image like so and uh, then if I want to convert back this image I can use the um, TC5 to convert the magic.txt into magic.png. There you go. And it might take just a while to uh, load. There you go. That's pretty much the original. It's posterized um, by default. Of, like, I don't have the full color palette, uh, I have a simplified color palette, but it's good enough. Uh, I mean, the quality is good enough. Uh, you could even say I like. I do like the style um, that it gave that it give to these image. It's not a bad posterized style. Um, so, yeah, it's a filter, and at the same time, it's a converter. And one other interesting thing is that if you look at the memory that these files take, they're supposed to take about the same memory size like 247 262 okay the, the text file take a little bit more memory so that's interesting um, 231 so yeah basically the original does take a little bit less memory um, but not that much the difference ain't that big and again it would be possible to optimize it so that it takes even less uh, memory space I think by just having it use fewer character like instead of having like lowercase uppercase and symbol if you just add like uppercase um, it would be a lot more optimized so that's the end of this video hope you you enjoyed the content that I made I'm just gonna delete these because I no longer require them and that's it that's it there that's the end of this video. Okay, I got like my little fireplace with music. Noitia, good game. Really like that game. I play it a lot these days. Uh, not that I have much time to play it, honestly. I'm um, working a lot on my other project. But yeah, where is OBS that I stopped this video? Bye, see you later.